Okay, I've unmuted myself. Can people hear me? Give me a thumbs up or a wave. Okay, cool. All right. So you're all muted because there's like 90 of you. I have 20 minutes with you, so you can ask questions in the chat, and I'll do my best to answer them. But for those of you that don't know who I am, I have my little cheat sheet here. My name is Eve Bushman. I've been the Wine and Spirits writer for SCB Elite Magazine out here locally for over 10 years. I've been creating events and co-hosting events for 10 years. I have a WSCT, a Wine and Spirits Education Trust certification, a level two. I have a Saki certification, level one. I have an American Wine Specialist certification. I have a video called Wine Immersion on YouTube that has over 16,000 views. It's for wine beginners, wine 101ers. I've served as a wine judge three times. Doesn't mean I know much, so, <laughs> but I'm here for you if you have any questions tonight. Hi. Okay, what's the best way to hold a wine glass? Okay, this is from Alex Hafizi, and he should already know how to hold a wine glass. I talked about this with him many a time, but you know, those Hafizis, they're, they're very hard to reach. So anyway, so this is my Logic's wine glass. I, I can't see myself, I'm calling my husband. I wanna see myself, but the Logic wine glass we got tonight is a beautiful Bordeaux wine glass for tasting your Bordeaux wines, your Cab wines, a basic wine glass for everybody. As far as holding this wine glass, if you can see me, you wanna hold your wine glass by the stem. Basically, if you put your wine glass here, it looks like you don't know anything. All you're doing is putting fingerprints on your wine glass and you're also warming up a wine that doesn't need to be warmed up. The only time you're gonna see someone doing this is because they were served a white wine that was over chilled. And if it's so chilled that I can't smell anything and I can't taste anything, then I'm gonna warm up that glass. Every 99% every of the time, my hand is on the stem. So when you're watching a movie or watching TV and you see somebody holding a wine glass like this and they're supposed to be some freaking millionaire, they don't know what they're doing. So that's the story <laughs> on the wine glass. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, what do the lines on the cup mean? I don't even know what that means myself. I can tell you that uh, one of the tricks that winemakers do or wineries do is the bottom part of a printing on a wine glass is usually their pour line. So just for it's a cheat for them as they want to stop pouring there. But basically, just to answer my own question, if you want to pour wine into a wine glass property, you pour it to the widest part of the wine glass. And that way you're going to get the best aromas when you go to smell it you don't want to pour it too high okay let me see here uh -huh. if, you, if you don't like acidic wines how do you order it do you say full body oh that's an interesting question i uh, acidic wines my husband and i both don't care for acidic wines most of the time you don't want to order a sauvignon blanc oh is that taylor hi <laughs> you don't want a sauvignon blanc it's highly acidic and it will i can maybe have one glass of an acidic wine um so stay away from sauvignon blanc some Chardonnays that are un-oaked, stay away from un-oaked Chardonnays. Um, full bodied is a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother term. But basically on the acidic part, no Sauvignon Blancs and make sure your, your Chardonnay is oaked. Um, out of all the wine donated, which ones are your favorites? Okay, you know what? I don't like that question because this is my list of all the wonderful winemakers that donated wine to us tonight. They're all my favorites. Uh, I did have one tonight I never had heard of before that I will look at, I will look for somebody donated cannonball I don't know that's just something interesting but they're all one all these guys gave us their wine for free so they're all my favorites that's what's, that's what's the best drinking temp oh the best drinking temperature for red wine my husband's asking me the question it's he's reading it here I want to say it's like 57 or something Steve Elzer, my expert is online tonight I want to say 57 it's not chilled like it's from your refrigerator if that's too cold, but your most of the rule of thumb is supposed to be room temperature. But you know, here in Santa Clarita, room temperature is 80. So no, obviously you're not going to drink it at room temperature. So when it's hot outside, my wine in my glass is going to be colder than obviously the temperature outside. So most of your chillers that you have are set at a certain temperature, but I, I can't tell you off the top of my head that somewhere between 50 and 60 something degrees. Too cold. It's too cold in the fridge. Too cold in the basic fridge. In what order should you drink or offer reds at a dinner party? That's from Kelly. I would say, depending on what you're serving, we go from the light reds to the heavier reds, standard. So you're gonna start with Pinot Noirs and Grenache. And you can tell by even looking at the wine glass, this is not a Pinot or a Grenache. We can ask my friend Double E who's on here tonight. Most Pinots and Grenache are lighter color, lighter color, lighter wine. It's pretty basic, right? So when you start with your your reds at night, you're going to start with your lighter colored wines to start your evening off. If that's what you're, if that's what you're doing, if you're doing uh, red, reds at a dinner party. Uh, yeah, we all love the donated wines. Oh, legs. 
legs. This is a term, oh, that's, that wine has nice legs. And you turn your glass, you guys can all do it with me. Turn your glass to one side. You can roll it if you want, but just turn to one side and then bring it back. And then if you see lines coming down, that's what they're talking about with legs. And people say, oh, nice legs. This wine has really great legs. Well, it turns out that term doesn't really mean anything. It just means there's a, a lot of alcohol in the wine. And that's what creates the legs. It's just an observation. It's just something, something to say. Okay, someone asked me about ZZ Top. Okay, so that's the same question about legs. Okay, Alex, stop asking questions. Okay, how do you pair food with wine? I, I think Jeff and Joan Jacobson are on here somewhere, but they are uh, my wine mentors from the very first uh, Vine to Wine when it was the classic, and it was Vine to Wine. And Jeff got me to bid on a book in your auction, in the Vine to Wine auction, of how to pair wine and food with everything. The book is like this thick. So it's a big, it's a big question. You can email me, eve at evewine101.com if you really want a, a very specific. But, you know, basically most people are like, oh, okay, fish and chicken goes with white wine and, you know, the meats go with red wines. It's slightly more complicated than that. If you're a red wine lover, but you also like fish and chicken, just douse that fish and chicken in like a, a darker sauce, in a barbecue sauce. It'll be fine with a red wine. It's, no, it's, it's not that complicated. So there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of pairings out there. Uh, one of the basic rules that I learned in, in my studies is you pair like with like. So if you're having an apple pie for dessert, you might want to have that with a sauterne or another dessert wine. Personally, I don't like sweet and sweet together. So I will pair, um, my favorite pairing is uh, food pairing that you can take home with you is a uh, sauterne or sweet wine. Think about a very sweet wine that may not be your thing and have it with a big old hunk of blue cheese, which may not be your thing either. But uh, an idea of food pairing, okay, I see that guy laughing. The idea of food pairing is when you put those two things together, that it changes in your mouth. And my big aha moment was like, oh, this wine is so sweet and this cheese is, you know, sharp, sharp. But together you get this, the, of course the sweetness is, is dissipated, right? But you get this nutty quality comes out in, in, in the wine and the cheese. You don't know what it is. But I went to a pairing. I must have had like a pound of the blue cheese. So that's one to that's one to try at home. Uh, happy birthday to somebody else. Somebody loves me. Yeah, stop. No more from Alex. <laughs> I'm a, did somebody ask me about absinthe? Marley wanted to know what your favorite Pinot is. Yeah, Mar uh, Double E wants to know what my favorite Pinot is. That would be whichever one Steve Elzer brings over or or um other burgundy fans that's it's kind of an inside joke i'm not a huge pinot noir fan it's a light red wine but i tend to the the burgundian version of it is so the area of burgundy france makes pinot noir but it's the grape there is called burgundy here our pinot noir grape which is uh the same grape we can't call it burgundy because they own the name we can only call it pinot noir but the reason I like the Burgundian Pinot better is because their, their vineyards are how many years old? Way, Way old, old <laughs> compared to our vineyards. So I feel like get more to our, is that Judy Penman? Hi, Judy. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Um, what's the best way to store corked wine from Arnold? The best way to, sport, to store corked wine would be to uh, store it into your garbage disposal because you don't want any corked wine. <laughs> That's what is that what he really means? Wines with a cork. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. He knows the answer to this one, too. So, um, Eddie, you better have any time. This was tough for 20 minutes. Wines with a cork. A cork is a natural thing, just like your wine is living and breathing. So is your cork, expanding, whatever. So you want to turn your wine ball that has a cork on, it on its side to keep your cork wet. There's nothing harder to do than trying to pull a cork out of a bottle of wine that's been standing up for all because it's so dry and it's so hard to pull out and you're probably going to end up breaking it. However, if you have a wine, uh, certainly a sake, if you have a sake with the screw cap, which most of them have, those wines are made fresh and meant to drink fresh. And if you were to store that on its side, it would actually, it, uh, for my sake sum, he's told me that actually will kind of mess up your, that closure, that screw cap closure. So it, the metal will not be good for your sake. So sake upright, wind down, right? You got that? <laughs> I see people laughing. Best wine what, was oh, Stephanie wants to the best wine with salmon. That, that's a pretty standard pairing that people like Pinot Noir with salmon. I think like you guys are trying to suck me into the Pinot Noir thing, but it, again, it's, it's, it, it, you can picture the color of something. White wine with white food, salmon with a lighter color red wine and of course your big giant steaks with a big giant cab that's the tannin in the wine can break down the fat in the in the steak 
So you go ahead, Stephanie, enjoy that peanut with that salmon. Shard. Yeah, you, yeah, my husband said you can have shard with it, but you know. Okay. Some wineries chill the reds. Wait, hold, you're going too fast. Charles wants to, some wineries chill the reds. And I like this, it's becoming more popular. Uh, some reds like a Nouveau Beaujolais and some of the lighter reds are, are okay to have red, uh, chilled. And often, often here in my home during the summer months, I don't want, I mean, I'll drink white wine if I'm sitting outside, but I want to be in my house. I want my red wine. When it's, normally I would take my red wine from my chiller and I would set it up for an hour or two before dinner. But right now when it's really hot outside, I take it from my chiller and that's, that's what I want it. But keep in mind that the colder your wine is, it's harder to get aromas and flavors from it. So just, it may be preferential to you to taste it that way. And it is for me, but I'm not going to get the same smells and the same flavors. And it, in fact, with this wine that I poured probably a half an hour ago that I've added a little bit to, it's smelling and tasting different than it did an hour or so ago because it's breathing more. See, she's nodding, she gets it. Um, is there a good all-purpose wine for any occasion, Laura and Gabe? Yeah, sparkling. If you read um, Madame Clicquot's book about her um, Clicquot champagne, champagne goes with everything. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, gets you in the celebratory mood when somebody starts a party. I mean, there's, there's, I've, ha I've seen in my pairing book, almost everything goes with champagne. But probably because nobody just turns it down. They just, they just want to drink it. <laughs> how do you store, I, I taught, how do you store a screw top wine on upright? No. How That's do what? you store a screw top wine you upright? Drink it. drink it today. Oh, my husband says drink it right now. <laughs> Emmanuel and Clara, drink it now. <laughs> Is there a good all purpose wine for any occasion? Laura and Gabe. Well, I don't know if you like red or white. I mean, I would still probably stick to uh, something sparkling if I, if, that, if I just want to have one wine because everyone has different, different uh, tastes. Oh, Charles, is, that's a disguise. What's the best food to have with Pinot Grigio? Uh, you know what, Pinot Grigio is like, I'll tell you in the baseline of white wines, Pinot Grigio is probably the easiest one to drink. It's not as acidic. It's got very, very fresh fruit, but it's an Italian wine. If, certainly if you're getting it from Italy. And if you've ever been to Italy, the food that you, the wine that you have there is meant to pair with the food that you have there. So when we're in Italy and we sit down at a restaurant and they bring me the menu, I say, well, you tell me what's your local wine. You order the local wine in any country, in any place. In the United States, everybody in the United States makes their own wine. But as far as Pinot Grigio, I would, to answer the question correctly, I would probably think, seafood something light not with something too much fruit in it uh, a cold uh, seafood salad lobster might be okay with that um i wouldn't have anything too heavy if your pinot grigio has a little acidity to it and those of you who are talking about acidic wines those wines work really well with uh pasta with a creamy sauce that it cuts right through all that cream and so it doesn't torch you too much with too much cream how important is it to use the correct glass for the varietal melanie wants to know so she knows i have a bunch of stuff behind me which i'm not going to need but i have different glasses when one of my friends who's online right now tonight comes over we use these special glasses this is my husband doesn't even get these right steve this is the psalm this is a psalm glass and compared to our logics glass you can see the difference so what happens with this glass is for a psalm for someone that, that rates and judges wine this gives me a really big nose and i really get a chance to get all the aromas out of it but this is a this is your standard cab and bordeaux glass and then for those freaking pinot fans this is your pinot glass so it has a wider bowl this is for pinot noirs burgundy chardonnay chablis this glass has a wider bowl because if i'm right um those wines are more delicate okay so i can get the aroma a little bit better from this glass Oh, my husband's favorite glass. <laughs> how, do you, how do you sneak wine into a movie theater? Is somebody Charles, asking that question? Charles, yeah. Who can you sneak wine in a movie theater? This is a, what's this thing called? Pirate something? Mm -hmm. And we use this on cruise ships and we make martinis with this. So they're laughing. Yeah, this is really good. I've got several shapes of these things and you can hide it in your luggage. I don't sneak wine in movie theaters. Honestly, I'm hoping the drive-ins really do come back because I totally, we always brought a bottle of wine or two and pizza and it was a fun night. Okay, ha, ha, ha. Favorite Viognier? Um, actually, I like the Viognier from Pacella, who's one of our wineries tonight. I've known the winemakers for about 10 years, and they're doing a better job year after year. It gets better and better, and they make a very nice Viognier out of Paso. 
And if you guys that like Pinot Grigio, I would suggest moving over to Viognier. It's a little bit, it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit better. I like Pinot, are you judging me? Yeah, forget it. You know, <laughs> go talk to someone else that likes Pinot. Why would you have wine left over? Yeah, I don't, <laughs> oh, here we go. If you have any wine left over at the end of the night, how long will it last after you open it from Alex and Arnold? So Alex and Arnold haven't learned anything in the 10 years of knowing me. Um, and Noel, I think, asked the same question, was uh, left or wine, a red wine or white wine. I have this. This is, uh, there's a word for it. I just call it an air sucker outer thing. So you take, the, your cork is gone, you put this in your bottle, you put this on top, and you're suctioning out the air of it, okay? So whatever's left isn't, isn't so much exposed to the air. Whether it's a white wine or a red wine, once you do that, it really should go in your fridge, because again, the wine is living and breathing and dying. So do that. And after you've had the half a bottle, whatever you've done, you, you want to finish the other half the next night. It's not meant to go in your fridge for a week. It will definitely change and not taste so good. And then one other tip on, on storing wine after you've opened it is if you have a bottle of red wine and it doesn't taste quite good, it's too tart. If you leave that overnight and don't put anything in it, it's like spaghetti sauce. Yeah, I've had it too much to drink. <laughs> People need to be muted. Thanks for joining us, but you must mute yourselves. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Bye, Edmund. All right, let's see what else. <laughs> I might be hitting my 20, 20 two minute, two minute one. Oh, I have two minutes left for you people. My email is eve at evewine101.com. I love taking questions. My website's evewine101. I have cocktails behind me. If anybody has a cocktail question, because I have a certification in spirits too. Okay, uh, last question from Charles. Can you recommend a good wine from the 99 cent store? A good wine from the 99 cent store? No, Charles, I recommend you stop messaging me. <laughs> no, go to, go to, um, um, well, yeah, Trader you can Joe's. get Trader Joe's. I take people to Trader Joe's and help them pick out wine. But they're, and I can get you a bottle of wine and good at Trader Joe's in the five or $10 range. Mm -hmm. But it's not as good as the wines we have tonight. I love you too. Obviously, Charles has had enough. <laughs> uh, wine in a box. Uh, there's one called the Cube at Target that got very good recommendations, the white wine and also the black box wine that they had it, uh, they've had it around for a while. And I even heard once that Two Buck Chuck, which isn't in a box, but Two Buck Chuck passed some, some judges. They didn't realize it was not that great. They thought it was fabulous. So, oh, my favorite bourbon right now, Hillary, is uh, Booker. What's in there, Eddie? You go find it. They're going to cut me off. Hey, Steve. <laughs> You guys are finally scrolling past me. Oh, Bib and Tucker. Bib and Tucker, you can get it at Total Wine. Uh, I buy, uh, my everyday bourbon is uh, the other one, Woodenville, right? This is Bib and Tucker. This is my sipping bourbon. And uh, the Woodenville of Louise from Eighth and Real turned me on to, and that's made in Washington. If you guys know your bourbons, they're still supposed to only come from Kentucky, right? But that one comes from Washington. It's a really nice sipping bourbon. But I do a lot of uh, cocktails. In fact, my husband has a cocktail in front of him right now. <laughs> so I thank you. You're wonderful. I, my time might be up. Time's up. My time's up. I would take more time, but we have to go back to the regularly scheduled programming and, and that's it. So give me thumbs up or, or something like that, whatever these reaction <laughs> things are. Oh, well, maybe it doesn't work on the Zoom. Okay, so uh, somebody's going to come take, take charge. Or I'm just going to keep talking, right? <laughs> well, shouldn't it just like go away now?